In this segment, we're going to show integrating the processor and the motherboard. Basically, that means installing the processor. Now, in this example, I'm going to be using a Pentium 4. Now, the Pentium 4 processor that I have here installs in what's called socket 478. The 478 refers to the number of pins in the socket. You take a look at this motherboard. This is the matching socket 478 motherboard. Um, you can actually see the designation on the socket MPGA 478B, it says there. The MPGA stands for Micro Pin Grid Array. Basically, you're just looking for the 478, and that means it's compatible with this particular processor. Now, these are zero insertion four sockets. In order to install the processor, you have to lift this lever up, which releases a grip on the pins uh, on the chip. Now, I'll be able to uh, insert the processor into the socket with no resistance. Now, I have the processor over here in my, you know, box processor packaging, which means that it came with the heat sink and, and all of that, too. I'm going to remove the processor from the package. And I'm going to align it with pin 1 on the socket. Now, if you look at the processor, you'll see that there's a dot on the chip. Also, on one of the corners is notched and has a little gold triangle on it. That indicates pin 1. On the uh, socket, you can see one of the corners is missing uh, one or two pinholes there. And that also indicates pin 1. Pin 1 on this socket is right here. So I'm going to align the chip pin 1 with the socket pin 1. And then it should simply insert all the way down. You can kind of, I like to press it down like this as I push the lever down to lock it in place. That means, or that ensures that the processor is firmly seated as the uh, uh, grip, you know, is applied to each of the pins. Now, the processor is basically installed. At this point, we have to install the heat sink. Now, installing the heat sink starts with installing the supports for the heat sink. The modern heat sinks are so big and heavy that they require extra support. It used to be that we could just literally clip the heat sink to the socket, or we could actually stick it right to the uh, processor itself. With the big, heavy heat sinks that we have today, that's simply not possible. Now, this motherboard came with a heat sink stand like this here. So I'm going to insert this stand into the four holes provided into the motherboard. These, these four pins are going to go into the holes. Then I'm going to push these white prongs uh, uh, down, and it's going to expand inside the pins and ensure that this stand will not you know, pop out of the, uh, the motherboard. So to insert it, I simply set it over the uh, four holes. I'm going to have to lift the board up here and use some force to push these four corners down. Okay, once you, uh, once you have all the four corners uh, fully seated, then you can push down these white pins, and that will uh, expand the, uh, the base so that it won't pop out. Some of them require a little bit of force. Okay. At this point, the base for the heat sink is now installed in the motherboard. You notice the white plastic push pins, which are inserted to prevent the base from walking out of the, the holes. That locks it in place. Now I'm ready to actually insert the heat sink on top of the processor and lock it down with these latches. Now I already mentioned the uh, thermal interface material that is pre-applied to the base of this heat sink. It's important to note that should this heat sink ever be removed later, that is, for any reason you were to take the processor out later to take this heat sink off, you need to scrape off this thermal interface material and reapply some new material. Now, normally, you can buy the thermal interface material in these small syringes or vials like this. And in that case, it's kind of a, a sort of a, a gooey, you know, substance. You simply squirt a blob of it either on top of the chip or on the heat sink itself. And then when you insert the heat sink, it'll sort of, you know, squish itself around and fill the gap between the processor and the heat sink. That ensures that there's no air gaps and that there's a good transfer of heat. So uh, I like to always have some extra, you know, tubes of this thermal interface material on hand. So anytime the heat sink is removed later, the thermal interface material must be renewed. Scrape all of it off, clean off the processor, clean off the base of the heat sink, and apply new thermal interface material. Well, since this is the first time this heat sink is going to be installed, Simply going to set it now over the top of the, uh, the base here and make sure it seats all the way down. Oops, I've got some wires in the way. And then I'm simply going to press down on these uh, latches so that they lock into place. <coughs> 
And then um, on the Pentium 4, they use this nice new design where I simply move these, these side latches sort of opposite directions, and that applies the grip to the heat sink base. There we go. And I'm just going to make sure that all the latches are firmly engaged, and it looks like they are. So now the heat sink is firmly installed onto the top of the processor. Now, one note that I saw in the uh, documentation that came with this uh, box processor is that this heat sink applies so much force to the motherboard that it actually does bend the motherboard. And I can see that here. The bottom of the motherboard, you can look at this uh, from this angle, the bottom of the motherboard is actually bowed slightly where the heat sink attaches. And what that, uh, that's caused by the tremendous amount of force that this heat sink is applying to the board. That's actually normal. In fact, uh, you have to ensure that there's enough clearance below the board to, to make sure that there's going to be no short circuits. That is, the board's not going to actually touch the bottom of the uh, chassis. So um, that's normal. In fact, uh, they caution against using any stiffening uh, devices on the bottom of the board because that'll prevent this from happening and overstress the board and probably crack it. So in other words, this bending of the board is actually intentional and a, and a good idea in this case. It, it does show how much force is being applied by the heat sink to the processor. Now that the uh, heat sink is installed, we have to connect the fan. Uh, there's a fan connector here. You should look near the CPU. There's probably a three-prong fan power connector, which I found right here and I'm going to plug it in. So now you can see where that was uh, plugged in. CPU fan connector is right here, and uh, that ensures we have power. Now these are three wire connectors. Um, one of the wires is power, one is ground, and the third wire is a tachometer signal so that this motherboard can actually monitor the fan and know that it's you know rotating at the proper speed. Should the fan ever have a problem in the future, that is it seize up or, uh, or, or the bearings start to bind, um, an alarm can actually go off in the system, you know, alerting you to that fact. So that basically completes the integration of the uh, Pentium 4 processor and the motherboard.